Good evening, everyone. Time for this week's Silver Update. You are looking at the daily chart of the Dow Jones Industrials. And we had a big drop today, around 300 points. We were a bit lower. We didn't close on the low of the day, but we are falling fairly strongly into the close. So almost a close on the lows. Of course, the most bearish scenario can be a close on the lows, but we're very close to that. You can see we are, if you look at this trend line, or I should say support line, that was violated in the fall of 2008, which was the major downdraft of the financial, the last financial crisis that I propose really has never ended. You can see we're just going to begin testing the support that that represents. My video from yesterday was a expose of the government solutions to the problems that we're facing. I think you could say that the move today in the stock market would be a vote of no confidence on both the Bernanke and Obama speeches. And as I pointed out yesterday, both speeches pretty much to summarize them, they are more of the same, kick the can down the road, put things off to the next guy's watch, more government, more spending, higher taxes, more debt, and more of the same. So it's encouraging that the market did not receive that in a good way. If we look at the gold chart, well, let's look at the Swiss franc first, Swiss franc versus a dollar. You can see that we're still on this rally, even though the downtrend itself has been violated, but has not recovered from its, we'll draw our trend line from back in 2008 to get a resistance line and we'll also draw one from roughly last year which is another line that gives us some kind of support and resistance so we still have a long way to go to get back to the place we dropped drastically from so will this intervention, will the fact that the central banks have brought in the Swiss people into their paper printing Ponzi scheme, will that result in a devalued Swiss franc and a more valuable dollar? In the short term, I think yes, but as Jimmy Rogers has pointed out and I've pointed out many times that normally when you have government interference in markets, whether it's central bank intervention or other forms of government interference. Normally, if you're trying to trade the technicals, you're going to get wiped out. But if you base your trade on the fundamentals, you're going to wait for the rally and go the other way. So let's look at the dollar because that's based on a basket to see how the dollar is performing in that basket. You can see we're on a big spike relative to the last nine months or so, the beginning of the year, we've pretty much recovered most of what we've lost this year, but we still have the downtrend is right about here. And then the next one is here. So we do seem to be rounding up on the dollar. It's not really encouraging as far as the overall view because of course we are racing to the bottom we're adding the Swiss franc to the mix of Western currencies that are printing their way into oblivion 
and uh, this is a brief pullback that is not really reflected in the gold and silver prices. You can see that gold is it's weakened from its all-time highs of about 1920, but it's not significantly weakened from those all-time highs. So overall, I would say that looking at the Dow and looking at gold, we pretty much have a vote of no confidence. Now, I've received some criticism from a number of viewers and something that's come up for a while now regarding my commentaries about the machinations of the Fed and the Congress and the President and these other players in the game. So I wanted to look at some proposals that I would put forth if I were stepping up in front of the nation putting forth proposals to fix the problem and of course before we talk about what the problem is we need to talk about or talk about what the solution is we need to talk about the problem so we're gonna to have to define the problem before we talk about the solution but before we do that I wanted to take you to a little slideshow that I've thrown together and hopefully it will become clear why I've chosen this slideshow as an example but let's jump over and look at this slideshow real quick and I'll hopefully be able to explain why I'm making this analogy a lot of you have surfed the web have seen many articles that document the newest fad that we have, well not newest fad, but one of the new fads we have is the plastic surgery craze that we have going on in the medical establishment and it's kind of interesting because I'm going to come back to this issue in regards to free market versus government medicine but to start off with I wanted to point out how the natural inherited or if you might say God-given situation is opposed to the man-made or the centrally planned situation and hopefully you can see this analogy I've pulled a number of faces of some of the most famous these are not all of them by far and I'm gonna put a link of all of the ones that are available but these are some of the most striking ones of the quote unquote plastic surgery disasters. Now a lot of people would say well that was a failure or that was a uh, anomaly or that was a exception to the rule but really most of these people, these unfortunate people, and I'm not bringing this up to make fun of these people but these are just people who have bought into a lie. So the first one I remember her name is Wildenstein and she is a very famous plastic surgery addict and you can see the before and after on her face. This next one I think is, her name is Nikki Cox. She's a, a fairly famous celebrity who's, who's an actress. You can see that with her face she somehow tried to enhance her cheeks I think and obviously her lips. I can't tell if her eyes have been done. The next one is Donatelli, Donatelli Versace. She's a very wealthy and famous I believe fashion designer or in or heir of the fashion empire you can see the before and after with her the next woman I can't remember her name but she's I think she's a famous actress who is in some of the late night soaps and you can see the after actually in this case and the before and then this is uh, I don't remember her name but she's a actress who was on a I think it was a police series I don't watch really don't watch TV so I'm really vaguely familiar with these so I'm using this analogy to point out to you what centrally planned or man-made or man-solved solutions give you which is pretty much if if you are honest can clearly see that you end up with monstrosities that rather than letting nature be as it is which is obviously designed whether you subscribe 
obviously you have your own religious beliefs and I'm not going to try to preach to you about that but most people who are at least somewhat religious would recognize that there is a design and then there is what man does so these pictures give you an example of the failure of man to improve upon that which he is given and that's pretty clear I I'll provide the link to you so you can look and you can argument you can make an argument that some of these are an improvement but by far and large they are a disaster so that's the principle and using this principle I wanted to jump over to some of the things that I would suggest using this type of model so if I were the president or if I were the chairman of the Federal Reserve and I think probably one of the best people that you could cite who has answered these questions over the years many times would be Jimmy Rogers also Ron Paul has made many similar suggestions but I think this quote is a roughly close quote to what was given by Ronald Reagan in his in his um, election speeches when he was trying to gain the presidency in the early 1980s and what what Reagan said was that government is the problem and free markets are the solution so again I've been criticized that I am saying that there are we're headed towards complete disaster and the price of silver and gold are going to explode to the moon the dollar is going to collapse the western currencies are going to collapse and the entire system is going to collapse and you're not offering any answers so I'm going to offer some answers here that are based on this principle that government is the problem and free markets are the solution so I've written out just a little summary here I'll call it the ABC's and the first A is the things that need to be abolished so if I were trying to propose a solution that is based on reality that free markets should determine the price of things and the governments need to step back and step away from central planning which is the cause of our problems I'm listing first the things I would abolish and of course the first on the list is going to be the Fed I'm not going to go into the details of that obviously most of you who are of the libertarian or possibly conservative position recognize that the Fed is one of the most destructive organizations ever created by mankind this is an organization that has continuously devalued the currency and through that has robbed the wealth of the vast majority of Americans so we can start with abolishing the Federal Reserve what do we we replace it with well we could replace it with some kind of congressionally issued currency my preference would be a bimetallic standard based back currency where the gold is not the only backing but gold and silver back the currency there's a lot of arguments one way or the other but obviously this is the worst model that we have the next on the list of the IRS I would abolish the IRS the IRS is a gigantic bureaucratic paper machine any of you who've seen one of my favorite movies Brazil and how he's employed with the Ministry of Information it's a bureaucracy that creates paperwork it creates an army of lawyers an army of accountants and a whole bunch of unnecessary people that don't produce any wealth but just suck wealth out of the system if we abolish the IRS and institute it, I would suggest something like a across the board flat consumption tax, which penalizes consumption and rewards savings. That's across the board. Something like that would be much better than the system we have in place because it would cause a very large number of people to put off consumption. Something like you see in the Asian economies where a large percentage of the population saves a large amount of their income that would cause capital investment that would cause the free market to appropriate that money and use that money in efficient ways and those who were inefficient would go bankrupt next on the list is the FDA 
This is a incredibly destructive organization who is obviously beholden to pharmaceutical interests and their supposed mission is the safety of the American people, but we know from recent news items that these are the people that stage armed raids on raw milk and yet okay some of the most destructive drugs that have been known to man that kill people and so obviously a very destructive organization one that just creates problems and sucks up money and is an endless black hole last on the list of things to be abolished would be the department of homeland security this is now put under its umbrella things like the tsa and other organizations but for the most part these are unneeded organizations organizations that are based on fear and propaganda and nonsense so these are all organizations that suck up enormous amounts of resources and give us nothing in return so these would be abolished under my plan the B's of my plan would be to blend the purpose of this concept is that to blend these organizations would cause those who are employed by the government to participate in the rules and regulations that they make. So the first thing I would do is I take Social Security and I would combine that. Obviously it could go up under the first and be completely abolished. It would be probably better if all of the money that was paid in as much as humanly possible or a percentage would just be refunded back to the people who paid it in and they can invest it the payroll tax would be completely eliminated and then we'd have to do something to support the existing retirees and, and phase this thing out there's a lot of possibilities with that but obviously the main point is that all private government retirements so we would take all the pensions of all of the government workers who have better benefits than all the people who are paying to support them we would blend those with social security and we would force the congress the federal employees ideally the state employees and all local and county employees to have the same retirement as the people that they are ruling over and you would probably see a, a rapid change in some of those policies the next would be regulations the type of regulations that the Congress passes are grievous to be born, to borrow a quote from the Bible, yet they don't lift a finger to lift those burdens themselves. So as far as the regulations, we would definitely want to bring the Congress and all government workers under the same regulations and possibly even more stringent regulations. Any bills they pass, any regulations they pass, any agency rules they pass, would immediately be ply, applied to them first and uh, you'd hear a lot of squawking screaming and crying and you probably wouldn't have nearly as many of those the C's of my plan would be to compete obviously free markets are the solution and government is the problem so competition is the answer so the first thing that would go straight into competition would be the departments actually it could be energy and education but we'll use the Department of Education first of all we'd probably want to abolish the federal presence completely and then we would want to make all schools we would probably want to abolish all government schools and put it into the free market and make schools compete what basis could they compete on well obviously it would be best that the parents decide but reading writing and arithmetic as a personal example my parents were both raised in one-room schoolhouses where all 12 grades attended together and they all learned to read they all learned to write they all learned to write in cursive they all learned a foreign language and these were schoolhouses that had things like the Bible the McGuffey reader and things so it's not an issue of money our educational establishment is sucking up money if you remember the expose I did on the salaries of teachers and administrators in our school system it's outrageous it's bankrupting us so obviously that one would be one that has to be opened up to competition and the last one is the medical establishment 
as you know, we've moved towards socialized medicine with the Obamacare bill. Obviously, the answer is to go the exact opposite direction. For example, the obviously not a good thing, but the example of plastic surgery is one of the examples that you use in the free market model. The other is Lasix surgery. These are actually two medical procedures that have followed the technology model in that as the people who administer these procedures compete against each other you see a continuous price decline in these procedures so plastic surgery which is not covered by insurance it's an elective surgery and uh, Lasix which is considered an elective surgery under most plans these are the two things under the medical system that actually have fallen in price. Everything else, of course, that is connected to insurance has gone up astronomically. And you can see that for yourself. Mexico has excellent medical care. Many Americans are going there. Costa Rica has excellent medical care. Many Americans are going there. And obviously, there are many free market medical systems that have much better care, much lower costs than we have. So. Here's an example of the things that need to be done. Will any of these things be done? No, they won't be done. And obviously, a complete collapse of the financial system, the currency, and uh, the entire tax structure of the country is going to result, possibly the tax structure of all Western nations and the currencies and the governments of all these are going to fall. So I just wanted to propose these solutions so that my critics who have said that I never offer any solutions I can show you that they're incorrect I've obviously criticized the opposite of these solutions on a continual basis these are the solutions these are the ways that we will get back to a saving society a growing society a fair society, a industrial society, and uh, we could recover. What are the chances this is going to happen? I give this chances, these chances between 0 and 0 .0001 that these are going to happen. So obviously, since that's not going to be the case, and as I covered yesterday with the speeches of Bernanke and Obama, their only recipe is for more of the same and since their recipe is for more of the same, then obviously we're just going to get more of the same with the price of silver and gold as these governments print themselves into bankruptcy and eventual collapse. And we'll talk to you next time.